kinds of ideas that lead into the weird world of quantum computing, okay. which, by the way, is a pioneer field. We're not there yet, yeah. right? We, we don't have effective quantum computers, but the imagination can become, I can store data, I can access it instantly, and I can store infinite quantities of that data. And that may be the next big technological revolution, right? That generates all the new jobs and, and things we can't even imagine. Correct, yet. correct. Now, I don't want to shortchange quantum mechanical research that's going on in a variety of other fields, like just, just uh, material science. We, we, we understand materials that we can build all kinds of new custom uh, ceramics or, or you know, paints or you know, maybe uh, a film that is uh, photovoltaic in nature where you could actually paint your house and your whole house becomes a solar collector. All of those things boil down to what's happening at the subatomic level, which we understand by quantum mechanics. So those are everyday applications of quantum mechanics that take place all the time. We just don't really think of those. But, but what seems more, I don't know, glamorous, sexy, it's at least filling up the internet right now, is this whole notion of quantum computing, which it, it's because of the, the astounding, almost infinite capability of data storage and rapid transfer of information that, w that we see that as, a, as a, a pioneering area, which is just a frontier that we really want to go explore more. And so that is something that's taking place at the, at the boundary of computer science and quantum physics. So, so really, when you're talking about actually applying quantum principles in, in materials, mm -hmm. in material use, uh, not necessarily computing use, it still has some of those same communications ramifications. Yeah. So theoretically, you could have smart paint, you could have Terminator style uh, bots, you, all kinds of things might could exist uh, that that is right now just the realm of science fiction, right? That's or am right. I am no. I too far off base? Well, I mean, look, I mean, any everything that we manufacture is built of materials. Mm -hmm. All materials at their atomic level behave according to the rules of quantum mechanics. So the more that we come up with designer materials that never existed on Earth before, somewhere there's there's a quantum physicist figuring out the quantum mechanics that leads to the chemistry involved with developing those new custom materials. So so the, the, the border of chemistry and physics is really material science. And so 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 you find you find application at these crossover points, right? You have these physicists doing fundamental research on quantum mechanics. You have these chemists trying to invent new kinds of materials. They find their, themselves at a junction where they're trying to understand the same principles. They begin to collaborate, and that's what moves that forward. In another place, you have the junction between computer science and quantum physics, where computer science is trying to solve these problems about data storage and data transfer and, and all these kinds of making things faster, more smaller, all those kinds of things. And you have uh, quantum physicists un trying to understand the nature of matter at the smallest scale. And they find a junction point and suddenly quantum computing is born, right? So, so a lot of times when we come up with new, uh, new inventions, new ideas, new frontiers in what we think of as science and technology, you're seeing these intersections between multiple disciplines where you know, you know, there's, there's even intersections between you know, say education and physics or between you know, a variety of other things. I mean, you know, psychology, understanding the human mind and understanding how particles work that make up our brains, right? It's, so it's interesting you're going there because I, I, as you're talking, I was thinking back to the idea of human behavior mm -hmm. and human communication and how we evolve and, and what ultimately might happen, how people might communicate. Some of the things that seem far out new agey may not be so far out new agey when we realize that really what, what's happening in the brain is, is uh, chemical interactions and electrical impulses and across synapses.